Kia ora, good afternoon. The death toll from the Victoria fires has climbed to over 100 people. Some burnt to death in their cars as they desperately tried to escape the flames. ITV's Libby Weiner reports. Fires were expected, but not a firestorm like this. It raged unchecked through the villages of Victoria, the searing heat literally vaporising buildings, livestock and people in its path. Australia had been braced for the worst, but few could imagine this. From the air, the scale of the destruction was apparent. Whole communities wiped off the map. Where there were survivors, many were in shock, one seeking solace from Australia's Prime Minister. Hell in all its uh, fury has um, visited the good people of Victoria in the last 24 hours and many good people now lie dead. We travelled through the blackened bush to one of the areas where many had perished. All around evidence of panic and devastation. An abandoned motorbike and beyond the body of its rider caught out as he tried to run away from the flames. Elsewhere cars had careered into each other, the fate of their occupants unknown. Most of the houses in the town had been completely destroyed. Much of the small settlement of King Lake is now a ghost town. Everywhere there's evidence of the haste with which residents were forced to leave. But the intensity of the heat meant many didn't make it in what now appear to be the worst bushfires here for a generation. Just a mile away, one of the luckiest of survivors, Eddie Giacometti, who took refuge in the cellar with his family as fire swept over them. And we saw the floorboards above us on fire and the windows were smashed and the fire was coming in the windows and the door caught on fire, so we sort of had to make a call um, to leave, but um, it was hard to open the door sort of thing. It was just you know, a million degrees in your face, but we put a blanket around all four of us and, and headed up towards the back of paddocks and ran through the fire. And... But the survivors here are few and far between. The fires have taken a deadly toll. The power of nature outstripping the power of mankind to defend itself. As we reported earlier, the death toll of the Australian bushfires has now passed 100. We cross now to Channel 9 reporter Tim McMillan, who's in Ye in Victoria. Tim, what's the latest you can tell us about the fires? Well, the death toll uh, confirmed at the moment stands at 108, although authorities warn that that number is definitely going to rise. I, I hate to use the word definitely, but it is almost inevitable. There are several towns right across the state that have been inaccessible and remain inaccessible, but we know that there has been utter devastation sweep through those towns, and it's now a matter of going back into those places and finding uh, if there are any survivors. This is one of 20 recovery centres currently in operation across Victoria. There are 3,800 people registered with the, with the Red Cross here. That effectively means there are at least that number of homeless. The Prime Minister has just arrived here. He's asking people, have they got what they need? Basics like food, like shelter for the evening, like some money to buy themselves whatever they need just to get through the day. It's just an extraordinary effort. Not just the firefighters, there are at least 4,000 firefighters still battling fires across the state. But it's also a logistical challenge at the moment. There's been so much outpouring of goodwill from Victorians, from people right across Australia and indeed the world, but it's just now challenging, uh, uh, channelling that rather uh, towards those people who need it. In terms of properties lost, the last count was 750. That is now looking like a conservative estimate. It just beggars belief, 750 homes destroyed in uh, less than 48 hours and uh, more than 350,000 hectares of bushland that's been burnt through. There are still new communities under threat as we speak. There is a large blaze burning near the Beechworth area, which is uh, northeast of Melbourne, and that is threatening communities as we speak. You might be able to see some of the trees blowing behind me. The winds are quite strong at the moment, so it's going to be another long and difficult day for firefighters here right across Victoria. Okay, Tom, thanks for your time.